Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to talk about how we can talk about length, distance, and orthogonality in vector spaces with our new definition of an inner product. So last time we introduced one specific inner product, the dot product, and now we're going to really start to use it to talk about all these concepts. We'll start with length. So if I take a vector u in Rn, then the length, which we sometimes call the norm of the vector, and I rewrite that length of u as this, so those double bars on each side of the vector, is defined to be, and here's my definition, it's the square root of each of the, the sum of each of the components squared. So in this case, if I have n components of my vector u, it's the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared plus so on and so forth. But when I look at that inside piece, I've seen this inside piece before, it's really just u, dotted with itself. So here I've defined the length of a vector, a vector, in terms of its dot product, the square root of u dotted with itself. And in some sense the definition should make sense. It's actually something we've seen before. For instance, if I look at a vector in two space, a vector like 1, 2 for instance, if I draw a two-dimensional coordinate system real quick, and I look at the vector 1, 2, that would be this vector, on this coordinate system, I can see that the length of this vector should be the distance from the point 0, 0 out to the point 1, 2. And in fact, I could just draw a little triangle and use Pythag if I wanted to to find out what that distance would be. And if I did, I would see that the length of u would be just the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So we can see in two dimensions, this naturally fits with our distance theorem. So now that we've seen the definition, let's see if we can practice and do some problems. So this would be a good time to pause the video and calculate the length of these two vectors. So pause the video now. Now you pause the video and work through these to see if we got the correct answer. So by definition, the magnitude of v should be the square root of v dotted with itself, or in this case the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9, plus 6 squared, which is 36. And if I add all those pieces up, it looks like I get the square root of 49, which is equal to 7. So the length of this vector is 7. For the next one, we see the magnitude of u should be the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, plus 6 squared, which is 36, plus 12 squared, which is 144. And if I add all these pieces up, I get the square root of 196, which turns out to be 14. So, hopefully got these two correct, and now that we've seen that what their, their answers are, it should actually make sense to us. Because if I look at u and v and compare those two, I can see that u, that vector u, is really just 2 times that vector v. Right? If I multiply this one by 2, I get 4, 6, 12. And when I multiply a vector by just a scalar, I am scaling that vector, I am stretching, I am just changing its length, but not its orientation. So what I see here is that the magnitude of u, which, because u is equal to 2v, is really the magnitude of 2 times v, is really just 2 times the length of v. So the length of u is 7, and u is 2 times v, so the length of u should be 2 times 7, which is 14. So that makes sense. Now I can generalize this, so in general, I could say that the magnitude of c times some vector would just be that value c times the length of u. And this is the more general property that I should take from this. So now I've seen how to calculate the length of a vector, and I've seen that I can actually scale a vector to adjust its length. That concept will help us as we define something new called the unit vector. A unit vector is a vector whose length is 1. Sounds simple enough, but generally we'll have some other vector, and what we want to do is find a unit vector that points in a specific direction. So for example, here's my vector v, and I like to find a unit vector that points in the direction of v. So I need it to point in the direction of v, but now only have a length of 1. Well, I know I can adjust the length of v. We saw earlier that the magnitude of v, the length of v, was 7. And if I take v and I multiply it by 2, then I would have a vector that points in the same direction of v, but would have a length of 14. If I multiply b by a half, I would have a vector that points in the same direction of v, but the length would be cut in half to be a length of 7 halves. So what value could I multiply v to scale down its length by a factor of 7? 
Well, that would be 1 7th. I would want to take 1 7th times v. And that should give me 1 7th times this vector 2 3 6, which would be the vector 2 7ths, 3 sevenths, 6 sevenths. And that vector would be pointing the same direction of v, but have a length of 1. Now, that works for the specific case, but in general, if I take 1 over the magnitude of v times v, that should give me the unit vector. And oftentimes, we'll see it expressed as this, v divided by its length. So this would be the general formula for a unit vector. So now we've talked a lot about length. Let's use this concept to help us talk about distance between two vectors. So now I want to talk about the distance between two vectors. So this will be the notation I use for the distance between u and v. Now, if we just think about regular r, so r1 vector space, the set of all real numbers, I could visually see that space as points on this number line. And if I wanted to find the distance between this vector and this vector in the vector space r, I would just subtract the two values. I would take 4 minus the other vector, which is negative 2, and the result would be 6. It would be the distance between those two values. So it makes sense for me to try to find this distance between them by finding the difference of the two values. However, if I look at r2, and I have two vectors, u and v, and I subtract them, I don't get a distance value. I don't get a number that I would hope for. Rather, I get the vector that points between those other two vectors. And so that looks like a vector between these two vectors. But I want the length between them, the distance between them. So what I need to do is take the length of the vector that goes between the other two vectors. So this will be our definition for the distance between two vectors. And even though right here it's written in terms of a magnitude, because I've already defined my magnitude, my norm, my length of a vector, in terms of the dot product, or more generally the inner product, now I can see that I can define distance in terms of that inner product. So I really could just write this as the square root of that vector u minus v, whatever that vector is, dotted with itself. So this would be the distance between two vectors expressed in terms of the inner product. So once again, let's look at an example. So now I have two vectors u and v. Can you pause the video real quick and see if you can calculate the distance between these two vectors? Now that you've had a chance to work on it, let's see if we got it right. We'll take the distance between u and v to be the magnitude of u minus v. In this case, that's the magnitude. I'm just going to subtract these two vectors. The u minus v would be 1, the vector 1, 0, and 5. And how I define the magnitude of that vector? It would be the square root of 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 5 squared. So it looks like it's the square root of 26. This would be the distance between those two vectors. So now we've talked about two out of those three key concepts, length and distance. The last one we need to talk about is orthogonality, or perpendicularity. Two vectors in Rn are orthogonal if and only if u dot v equals 0. So when the dot product of two vectors is equal to 0, then those vectors are orthogonal. So before discussing some of the other implications of this statement, let's see if we can just practice some calculations. So for instance, if I have these two vectors, u and v, are they actually perpendicular? Are they actually orthogonal? And as a separate question, if I have these two vectors, u and v, is there a specific value of b that would make these two perpendicular? So take a second and see if you can answer these two questions. Now that you've had a chance to work on these questions, let's see if we can get the answer together. Well, in both these cases, if I'm trying to find out if these two vectors are perpendicular, I'm going to calculate the dot product and see if it's equal to 0. So in this first case, u dot v would be equal to 1 times 0 plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1 times 2. This looks like negative 2 plus 2, which is equal to 0. So these two vectors are perpendicular. They are orthogonal. In the second case, once again, I'm going to try to calculate u dot v and see if it's equal to 0. But now when I do this calculation, I get 4 plus b squared is equal to 0. 
So I would have to solve this to find out the correct b to make this value equal to 0. Now in this case, I would get b squared is equal to a negative 4. Thus, b would equal to plus or minus 2i, an imaginary number. So if I was restricting myself to the real number case, there would not be any real number b that would make these two vectors perpendicular. The next thing we're going to talk about is an implication of this fact that when the dot product is equal to 0, then the vectors are perpendicular. So if we look at this case, I might have some vector u, and I might have some vector v, and I'm going to take these two vectors to be orthogonal. And then if I draw this vector, I have myself a little right triangle. Now I know if I call the legs of this right triangle a, b, and c, that the Pythagorean theorem would tell me that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know that's true. But how do we talk about this in terms of vectors? Well, <clears throat> a squared would be the length of u squared. The length of u squared. And b squared would be the length of v squared. And by the Pythagorean theorem, this would be equal to the magnitude of u plus v squared. And so what we'd like to do is kind of investigate this expression and see if we can actually justify it in terms of these new definitions we have for length. So since we know that the magnitude of u is equal to the square root of u dotted with u, well then u plus v squared, u plus v, that magnitude squared, must be equal to the vector u plus v dotted with the vector u plus v, dotted with itself. And so now we're going to treat this like one big vector, and we're going to use our distributive property to say this is u dotted with u plus v, plus v dotted with u plus v, just using our distributive property. And now we can use that distributive property again. And we'll say that u dotted with u plus u dotted with v plus, now we're working over here, v dotted with u, plus v dotted with v. And now we'll simplify. u dot u is really the magnitude of u squared. v dot v is really the magnitude of v squared. And I'm left with two of these things, plus 2 times u dot v. And I can really say two of those because the dot product is commutative, so these are really giving me the same value. And this is, once again, equal to u plus v squared. So our statement was just this piece without this extra 2 times u dot v. And so why does that 2 times u dot v disappear? Well, the idea is that this expression is only true if these two vectors are perpendicular. And if they're perpendicular, u dot v would be equal to 0. So we can see how this idea of perpendicularity lets us justify this Pythagorean theorem. So to summarize, we have seen how we can describe a vector's length, its distance, and its orthogonality in terms of the inner product, or in this case, the dot product. So we have the length of a vector in terms of the dot product. We have the distance between two vectors as the length of the vector u minus v, which once again is defined in terms of the dot product. And lastly, we can tell if two vectors are perpendicular if and only if their dot product is equal to zero. And that concludes this video. Thank you.